there's a great north-south issue here. You can't create a gene de novo in the laboratory. This is an extractive industry like oil. Well, you know, oil's found in the Middle East. Well, genes are found in the equatorial countries of the southern belt because that's where most of the genetic diversity of the planet is. So now we've got these global genomic companies bioprospecting in places like Brazil. They find a rare gene. If it has commercial value, they immediately seek a patent in various governments. Now, the southern countries like Brazil are crying biopiracy. They're saying, hey, come on. These are our resources. We should have compensation. The northern companies are saying, no, we put in all the time and effort. We need to be compensated for our work. My position is these genes don't belong to Brazil. I'm sorry. And these genes don't belong to Celera or Monsanto. The gene pool exists a priori and independent of governments or corporations. We're talking about millions of years here of biological legacy. And I think that if we allow the gene pool to be the political property of governments, or the intellectual property of companies, I guarantee every parent watching this interview, I guarantee you, your children or at least your grandchildren will have gene wars. We fought wars over oil in the industrial age. We fought wars over metals during the mercantilist age. And a lot of people suffered and died. I think we should do the right thing here. And the right thing is to ask the right question. Will our children be well served and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren if they grow up in a world where they think of all of life as intellectual property, the genes, the proteins they code for, the organs, the tissues, the organisms, to show you how out of control this corporate policy is. Dr. Wilmot, who cloned the sheep, his company, PPL, has a patent covering the cloning process, and the British government has granted him a patent on all cloned animals, and the British government did something else. They gave his company a patent on all cloned human embryos up to the blastocyst stage of development. That's the stage where you develop the stem cells that are so important for medical research. Now, think about this for a moment. In the 19th century, we had a great global debate. Can you own an individual human being as commercial property after birth? We had an anti-slavery movement. It spread across the world. We abolished slavery. But now, these life science companies have technologies that allow them to own an individual human being at the conceptual through gestation stage. So now one of the great political issues of the 21st century, should corporations be able to own life at its earliest stage from conception to birth? The British Patent Office has said yes. The right thing here, we need to craft a great global treaty to establish the gene pool as a commons, as a trust. We're talking about millions of years of evolution here. It's a great legacy. This doesn't belong to governments or companies. You know, when we discovered the last continent, Antarctica, we did the right thing. We violated thousands of years of the human territorial imperative, and we did the right thing. We said, look, Antarctica, no government owns it. No company exploits it. It's a trust. We'll set up a treaty. We should at least do the same with millions of years of evolution. Allow the gene pool to be a shared legacy create a great treaty so every government becomes a signatory and make this our finest legacy. Then we can enter the age of biology and maybe it'll be a renaissance and not a period of dark social upheaval.